C17 introduced fault expressions. A fault expression is an instruction for the compiler to repeat the application of an operator over a parameter pack. For example, on the screen you see a sum function that has been implemented as a fault. If we call sum with the parameters 1, 2, 3 and 4, these will become the values in the values parameter pack. The yellow fault expression repeats the plus operator for each of the values in the parameter pack. In other words, when called with 1, 2, 3, 4, this will expand to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. In other languages, faults are also referred to as reduce operations. C++ supports two types of faults, unary and binary faults. This is an example of a unary fault, as the operator, in this case plus, is written only once. To prevent an error when passing an empty parameter pack, I can turn it into a binary fault by adding an initial value, like this. Note that the ellipsis, the three dots, is in between the two occurrences of the plus operator. Now let's look into the syntax a bit more carefully. As I said, we have unary and binary faults. Both use the parentheses and the ellipsis, the triple dot. The difference is in the number of occurrences of the operator. A unary fault has a single operator. A binary fault allows you to also pass an initial value that is written using two occurrences of the same operator. Faults are either left or right associative. By putting the parameter pack on the left or on the right side of the fault expression, we can change the order in which the operator is applied. Let me give an example. When the parameter pack is on the left side, in the case of the unary fault, the ellipsis would be on the right, you have a right associative fault. This means that the operator is applied from right to left. If your parameter pack contains the numbers 1 through 4, first the operator would be applied to 3 and 4, then the result of that would be combined with 2, and the result of that with 1. Right fault, right to left application of the operator. If you put the parameter pack on the other side, we have a left fault. First the operator is applied to 1 and 2, then the result is combined with 3, and the result of that is combined with 4. Left fault, left to right application of the operator. You might be wondering whether there's a real difference between right and left faults. And this actually depends on the operator. Indeed, if you use the plus operator, like in our previous example, it doesn't matter which order we add up the numbers. However, if we use the minus operator, there's a big difference. 3 minus 4 subtracted from 2, and that total then subtracted from 1 equals minus 2. However, 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 equals minus 8. So keep the associativity of your fault expressions in mind when working with operators where the order of evaluation matters. Parameter pack on the left means right associative fault. Pack on the right means left associative fault. I like to think of it as the operations are performed towards the side of the parameter pack. And the same holds true for binary faults. If your parameter pack is on the left, you have a right fault and the other way around. Again, the operators are applied towards the side of the parameter pack. You can use almost all binary operators with faults, allowing you to write all kinds of almost magical expressions. But which operators are the most useful? And in which situations can a fault expression actually help you to write code that is more expressive and easier to maintain? Let's check out some examples. Computing the average of a set of inputs is a common operation that is usually executed in two steps. If you want to support a mix of different types, a variadic template like this one is a good option. However, this also makes looping over your input values and computing their sum quite cumbersome. The most common solution would be to use recursion, which can easily confuse the reader of your code. However, by using faults, we can simply write something like this. First, we compute the sum using a fault expression, then we divide by the number of values. Note that I made the decision to require at least one value in the function signature. After all, computing the average of zero values is ill-defined. By including this requirement in the function signature, the user immediately knows to supply at least one parameter, without even having to look at the implementation of the function. If you want to support computing the average of many big values, you might want to slightly rephrase this implementation and already divide each of the values by the total number of values before adding them up. 
Note the additional parentheses used to make it clear to the compiler how to expand the fold expression. Next to arithmetic operators, another very useful operator to fold over is the comma operator. In C++, the comma operator can be used to execute the expression on the left of the operator, followed by the expression on the right. The expression foo a is executed first, followed by the expression bar b. It is common to fold over the comma operator in order to repeat operations. We can, for example, use it to write a generalized pushback operation. This pushback function accepts an arbitrary container and several values to push into it. A fold over the comma operator is used to repeat the pushback operation for each of the values in the parameter pack. You could, for example, use it with a vector of int as a container and push back the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in one go. Note that our fold is a right fold, meaning that the resulting expression is v.pushback1, comma, and then in parentheses, the pushback of 2 and 3. However, since the comma operator has precedence over the parentheses, and it executes its operations from left to right, the pushbacks still happen in the correct order. First 1, and then 2 and 3. Another common use of fold expressions over the comma operator is to apply a function to each of the parameters in the parameter pack. Say you are working on a project where you regularly need to log information using a log message function. This log message function accepts only a single parameter, and you find that you need to log a large number of messages. Instead of repeating the log message function over and over again, you can just use apply to each, passing the log message function as the first parameter and each of your messages as the other parameters. As a matter of fact, we can recreate our previous generalized pushback function by passing a small lambda that captures our container. This little snippet on the left does exactly the same as all those pushbacks on the right, but it is a lot more concise and expressive. With more than 30 binary operators supported by folds, there are of course many other uses. You could for example do a fold over the logic operator AND to check whether all of the predicates in a parameter pack are satisfied. Or similarly, fold over OR to check if any of the predicates are satisfied. If you have found a nice way to make your code more expressive using folds, make sure to share it by leaving a comment down below. If you have found this bits of Q tutorial useful, Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.